the current move of God always, almost always seems to fight the next move of God. If I have seen God move this way, if I have seen God lift men this way, if I have seen God prosper men this way, chances are excellent that when I see God move again in a way that is foreign to my experience, immediately I flag it off and I say, no, God cannot prosper this way. Now look up, let me give you an example. I will never advocate carelessness, laziness, get rich quick and so on and so forth. The model for wealth as we know in our world is diligence, the Lord blessing the works of your hands and you grow gradually. If you build a house after 20 years, 30 years, men will clap for you and say, that's right, that's how life works. But in the economy of God, there are other possibilities that only few people have revealed. For instance, by this time tomorrow. Now, what if that happens to someone? You have defied all the economic laws you know. That is not throwing away the laws. It is building on that foundation that God can also go this far. How about a fish producing coin? How about manna falling from heaven? What other dimension is there to God that we have not seen? What other dimension is there to the kingdom? What other dimension is there to evangelism that we have not seen? Imagine that for instance, just an example, a man now steps into a dimension of intercession where you pray in a certain way and the Spirit of God can literally make a multitude of people to have dreams of the cross in one night. That can be a dimension and you find multitudes saved by the next day. Everybody saying, I had the same kind of dream and thousands of people get born again by themselves in one day. Could it be that that is a dimension that is reserved for the end time? Models are important. But the challenge with models, number one, I repeat, is that because they are emotionally connected to their current results and their experiences, chances are excellent that sometimes they can feel insecure and they can feel like failures if any improvement is added on their initial experience. Are we together? Yes. Let me tell you the truth. When I started ministry, I didn't see these kind of manifestations that you see now. I know there are times you are teaching and then when you start ministering, you see that maybe a special healing program and people are shouting, jumping up and down. But we did not see it in this manner. I had to study scripture myself to say, I hope that this thing is of God. How do you talk and every day people are shouting from start to finish? If it's a miracle service, people will understand. But even when you are joking, somebody is still shouting. So I needed to go to scripture and say, God, what is wrong? Am I all right? It was William Branham who would stand on a crusade ground and not minister for a long time. And he would say he's waiting for the angel that signifies his revelation. He would stand walking for a long time and later on he would just smile and say he has come and begin to prophesy. Now, I'm not saying you use that model, but I'm saying these are possibilities that have been shown in scripture, have been shown in the lives of men. It would be stupid for any man to go to a river in Abuja and sit down and say, fish come quickly, bring my house rent. No. But it would be totally, it would be totally unbelief on your own part to shut that possibility from God. If it happened once, it, a portal has been opened again. It will not close. It will only be administered when it is needed. You see that now. Every possibility that is open in the spirit creates a portal in the earth where it can happen again and again. Sometimes they are reserved because the saints are not matured enough to walk in that dimension. God seeing that it can lead to another kind of error that will end up destroying the body of Christ. Now, most people who are new in the faith may not understand a strange experience that we used to have many years ago. It was the experience of oil and gold dust. There used to be these experiences. When we started ministry, many people would have these experiences. Oil coming out of their hands. I had videos where oil was dropping from a cross in a church. Not manipulation. You will see it from the video. Jars of oil. You will see feet of angels. Laced with gold dust, silver dust. As we saw this thing, there was a breakout of it that time in Zaria. Many believers started coming into it. You know what? It now started leading to error. Because many people will go to pray and be looking around their body. They wanted gold dust and God withdrew that sign till today. So there are many things that God will not allow. Not because he cannot do it. He's more interested in the growth of believers. I have cried myself. Many of us who are, have been quite old in this ministry know. I have cried myself and what came out is oil, not tears. Sometimes we don't share these testimonies because we do not want to create a negative pattern. 
Someone will go now and say, wow, so oil is proof of anointing. And start praying and say, if your oil is not coming out of your hand, you don't know God. Another movement will start credited to your model. Are you seeing that now? It is the reason why we hide our experiences like I taught you behind the cross and we insist that only that which is consistent is, is consistent with scripture is known and revealed to people. But let me tell you, there are many, many experiences. There are some things I will tell you about my life and my experience with God. Some of you will not even believe it. So we shelve it and give glory to God. And that which is profitable to the church is what we communicate. Many of us here, I believe, are going to be models to a generation. You must beware. Hear me? Models are foundations. You must be secured enough for improvements to be made on what you have laid and yet not feel like a failure. How many of you have seen the foundation of a house? Do you paint it? The foundation of the house is about the ugliest part of that building. It's even so down that you don't see it. Yet that is what holds the building. Hallelujah. All of the aesthetics in this beautiful auditorium is courtesy the strength of the foundation that is laid. So there are people who have modeled certain dimensions of God. But right now God is bringing other word-based scripture consistent dimensions. It's like seals that have been closed for the end time. And now they are being opened. We are seeing God move in ways that we never imagined again that he would move. We are seeing God do things now. Are we together now? That may be foreign to the experience of people, but is consistent in scripture. I'm saying this, that when you become a model, even if you are Samuel or Eli, be careful when God begins to speak to Samuel in a way you do not understand. Don't call it an attack and don't call it error. Among the many failures of Eli, one thing he did right was to discern that even though his eyes were dim, he had seen that a new move is rising called Samuel. And he was secured enough to say, if God speaks to you, maybe if I were Eli and I hear that God is calling Samuel, maybe some of us would have killed Samuel and say, you would die here now. Isn't that true? Maybe some of us would have said, if God ever speaks to you, Samuel is a demon spirit. But Eli told him, if he says this, say, speak for your servant heareth. And that became the journey that made Samuel a mighty prophet who ordained the kings in Israel whose word did not fall to the ground. Many of us are inevitably going to be better than our parents financially, spiritually, ministerially. But let me give you a word of caution. Never fight foundations because of the beauty of the superstructure. Did you hear what I said? Today, when we say the inventors of vehicles, with all due respect, we don't call Toyota, we don't call Mercedes-Benz, we don't call all of these cars, even though they have produced cars at a level we never imagined, the credit still goes to those who founded it. If I ask you who is the founder of electricity today, as much as we know and history has told us, you will not mention the guy working in the power holding company in Nigeria. You will not even walk, mention the one who started solar panels. No, the credit still goes to the foundation. This again, becomes a caution for the generation rising. We must never look down on fathers and those who have become models because we may have seen certain areas. No, a foundation is why a building stands. A building can crash down and you can rebuild it if the foundation is right. The Bible says, if the foundation be destroyed. Remember my teaching last week? I told us that the stature of a man in the spirit is beyond the quality of his rema for want of word. If you depend on just the quality of our speakings to measure spirituality, you will make a mistake. You would have said Billy Graham. Billy Graham did not perform many known miracles as we see. In fact, I didn't find any quite frankly in his videos. Of course, I believe there will be others. However, will I ever stand and try to match my stature with Billy Graham today? No. Even a blind man who is not born again knows that there is an east and west difference. Hopefully we will rise in our lifetime, but we are still on the journey and we must recognize it. There's Billy Graham's message online. There's my message online. Many of you listen to my message. But that does not mean I'm greater than Billy Graham. No. Again, our arrogant world will soon believe that we are better. No. We will be an improvement. But you see, that foundation that was laid is what has helped us to be able to build today. 
It is the reason why among other things we can go to Manchester, we can go to UK, we can go to America, we can go to Canada because someone challenged our faith that on account of the gospel, God can pick you from your lowly estate and you can speak his purposes to the nations regardless the color of your skin and that the same Lord is rich unto all. You understand me so far? Shout Amen. amen. Can I tell you, I'm saying this to you because you will be a pioneer one day as a father, as a mother, as a leader starting your business, as a man of God. Let me tell you the truth. If as a pioneer, you are the best version of yourself at the end of your life, you failed. If as a pioneer, at the point where you are ending your journey, you are still the best version, you have failed. The excellency of your being a pioneer is that you raise people who become an improvement. 